Inside Truth, broadcasting live from beautiful British Columbia, it's Rogue Hill Radio. And now, here are your hosts, Terry Simpson and Terry O'Neill. We'll be talking with, uh, sitting to my left, on your right, those waiting patiently, Derek Hoare. Derek, thank you for being here tonight. Now, I should tell our audience that I did contact uh, the Minister for Children and Family Development, Mary McNeil, and I invited her on the show, and I got a very polite call back saying she wouldn't be able to make tonight. Um, but I want everybody who watches this video or listens to this, this archive of this show, number one, I want you to become informed about what's really going on here in, in this province and, and across Canada, actually. The fact that they can walk into your home, a, a, a father who does above and beyond any what, what should be required of any parent, to be treated like this, Derek, is, is just the greatest example of contempt for the family, for contempt for the best interest of children. It is the most blatant example of conduct that is beyond reprehensible. Your daughter is paying the price because these people don't understand and don't get it and don't understand the, the family relationship and the bonding and all the rest of it that goes on with this. They have their little mandate and they think that they are God. And, and you know, at some point, people, we have to get together as common sense, civil-minded good people and say enough of this nonsense. These laws that are across this country have got to be changed. Your family could be next. Your grandchildren could be next. The thousands of families that I've helped, this is not a new problem, Derek. This goes back, I mean, we dealt with this back in the, eight, the 1980s, Terry. We saw some changes yep. depending on the government. Well, this needs leadership. This needs constitutional amendments for protection from fam for families in this nation so that children like I don't have to pay the price for social work stupidity. Now, in the short term, because this is definitely a long-term goal, and it's a big project, and as... It can happen Car quick if there's Carrie, political you, will, you, Terry. As you suggested, we've been working on this for a couple of decades. Um, what is exactly the timeline of... Uh, what you have to do, go through, what hoops you have to jump through, has there been a hearing, or what exactly is going on now? Uh, there was some mention about a, a hearing that has to come up. Uh, well, there was a hearing on, on uh, Tuesday, the 21st, and um, but I received the paperwork from them literally while sitting there. So they didn't hand you any paperwork. You didn't know the legal test you had to meet. You couldn't take advantage of the seven-day must appear in front of a judge because you didn't have any information about what their position no, was. No, and anything. the reality is here. Did you have a lawyer with you? I, I, I called legal aid, and I hadn't met her yet, so technically no. When I received the papers, I didn't have one. She tapped me on the shoulder while I was sitting in the courtroom and said, are you Derek? And I said, yes. She said, we, I just received this week. Oh, well, that's, that's the justice system. Yeah, so there wonderful. you go. There, that's the one week before. Holy mackerel. Yeah, well, I mean, we stood down repeatedly and looked at this over, and I told them I want to contest this. Yeah. And she said, you know, the reality is if you contest this, which is where I'm going to be for the next 45 days, the hearing that I will get in order to contest it will be 90 days away. Right? So is this order, is this order and for then, I? Then the 45-day period begins, sorry. So it would be 135 oh. days before um, the protection hearing actually. So right now, the, um, for the ministry has I indefinitely, or is it? At this seemingly, stage? seemingly. I mean, eventually, I would get a protection hearing. I, if I contest this this presentation hearing, um, I have to wait to give my side of why she shouldn't be taken for they they said about ninety days, and then they would after that hearing when they said where she gets to spend the next forty five forty five days later, we'd have a protection hearing where I where the standard of evidence changes and now they have to demonstrate what they're saying and they can't. Mm -hmm. So everyone will attest that she was a well-behaved good girl in school or at, in home and at school she was this volatile creature that they're getting this perception of. That's why they believe she's hard to manage. Everyone will say I was doing very good and that this it could set her back I don't know how long. Well, I'm going to call upon the minister to have a review of this case el pronto, immediately. This is your child is paying the price for a system that is just a mess and designed to create more destruction within the family, not to, to help the family support. I would suggest to you, Derek, that the voluntary agreement meant that she was going to be removed from your house anyway. It was. Yeah, they have, they have a plan here. That's why I said no. Yeah, 
And, and you have no other option but to contest this, even though if the timeline seems in the end it's going to be a shorter well, amount of time. They've given, when you look at the form, it says on there, um, they checked off th that she was removed under Section 30 and that there was no less disruptive available measure is adequate to protect the child. Okay? A lie. That is a lie. Well, what they did then is at the end of the, the, the paperwork, they had to put down what less disruptive measure they... they um, considered and in it it says a special needs agreement was offered to the parents which they declined there was no less disruptive measures sufficient to adequately protect the child well the, the, the agreement itself calls for removal so this is you know they're supposed to say what less disruptive That's measures you do 22. other than removal That's a and they say 22. well we offer to remove them right well and that, that that's an absolute Catch-22. That's Stalin-esque. That's right out of the sending them to the gulag. You're guilty if you're not guilty. You're guilty if you're guilty. It's right out of the mid middle, middle Ages, uh, or the Dark Ages, when you'd, you'd uh, to test the witch. To, to, well, if you burn, well, because you're not a witch. If you burn, you are, well, whatever. You know, uh, you're, 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 you're done, done for, for either, either way. Either way. Yeah. So you reject the special needs agreement. Right. which called for removal anyway. So because Correct. you rejected it, we're going to remove it. Right. Remove her. Like, that is absolutely ridiculous. Now, I would say that every judge has a duty to act in the best interest of your child. When is this due to go back before the court? The 12th of July is when it was adjourned till, where we'll have the presentation hearing, and I presume I will have to contest it. Okay, and that will be in Abbotsford, will it? Correct. Okay. And uh, we are going to keep everybody posted again on, on this case as well. And uh, I will be putting more letters yeah. off to the minister. And I think we should get the minister on this show, Terry. Sure. I, you know, this, is, this just brings back memories of uh, the last time we did this. And a very good minister back in the social credit days, going back way then, Norm Jacobson. Oh, my um, God. You know, and you know what the problem with Norm Jacobson was? When we finally got down to the nitty-gritty about what was happening in his ministry, he could not conceptualize the evil that was taking place, the, the, the destruction and the practices. And we sat there together and I explained the last week and the cases. I remember that. And the realization crept into his eyes. I watched it start to register with him. And you know what? He was a good minister. The minute he got it, he did something about it, Derek. And I'm hoping Mary McNeil is one of those ministers. I hope she's going to demonstrate some leadership here, some courage, and stand in the gap here and say, what is going on in these cases? You better have a good reason for the conduct that you've displayed in taking this little girl. Mm -hmm. That's right. what Mary McNeil needs to be asking her staff tonight. She needs to phone them tonight and get on this is what she needs to do. Yeah. She needs to look at how I was in the home because these reports that they're getting are incredibly skewed. So if they would just look into this and do this investigation, like so they would see. I think we have a caller on the line. Uh, caller, are you there? I'm here. Hi, who's calling? This is Amy Van Dyke. I'm Ayn's mother. Oh, hi. Um, hi. Yes, thank you for joining us. Have you been able to listen to the show so far? Only a little bit. Unfortunately, I'm working at the moment, so I, I don't see. have time for a quick break, really. Yeah. I definitely wanted to call in okay. and what show Derek my support. What are your feelings about um, whether or not the apprehension of Ein by uh, the ministry was, was warranted or not? Well, I certainly feel I should have been consulted if they had protective concerns, and I wasn't. And obviously, I placed the children in the care of their father because I felt like he was the best fit for them. Um, these children have exceptional needs and really require 24-hour care, and she's in the be best position to be able to provide that for them. Amy, you, you, you um, raise an interesting point. You, you mean you weren't even contacted? There, there were four days from the incident of when um, Ayn went missing until the social workers showed up uh, at, at uh, Derek's home. During this time, you were not consulted um, a, a, or even asked for your opinion about um, if there, there was some other services or support could be given. There was no not exploration? At all. Not a phone Not at all. Was there any phone call? Not a phone call. I was actually there for the incident when she was we were informed that she was going to be taken from the home. I haven't heard anything from her before since. I did speak to the supervisor, but he basically just reaffirmed the fact that she was to be taken, and there really wasn't anything that we could do. Okay, so, so this is uh, yeah, 12 you, days later, and neither one of you have been told. You haven't been given any information either, Amy, about your daughter? Nothing. Not a word. This is the first time in 
the history of my motherhood that I haven't been able to find out how my children are faring. Yeah, well, uh, welcome to this reality here that um, so many other parents and all too many parents have had to go through when they get uh, sucked up into the black maw of the ministry here. Um, the uh, one of our uh, one of our uh, listeners has just uh, sent us an email saying, you know, it's like the ministry extorts the caring parents to comply by abusing your child and threatening to make the suffering even worse. And uh, Wayne, I. I think that's a good way of looking at it. It, it just boggles my mind uh, when I hear about cases like this, uh, and then I, when when it's supposed to be the welfare of the child is supposed to be paramount, and something like this, and the, um, when when the ministry takes an action like this and then doesn't, um, then then totally cuts out the people, the person or people who know best about. Right. What about how to care that for that child who have spent years or decades caring for that child, um, and, and they they certainly are the experts. And then to cut them out totally, rather than working with them, um, to be so draconian about it, um, and then to leave them in the dark, I mean, it multiplies the suffering a uh, hundredfold. I mean, it's not just. It's abuse, Terry. It's not just about not being good for the child. It's also about the suffering that goes along with that. We can only imagine what sort of suffering Ayn is going through right now, being ripped away from her father and her siblings. Uh, and we certainly can see that the sadness, um, primarily the sadness um, here sitting next to me. Uh, and But there's anger there, and there's a sense of justice when... Um, you know, there's no greater love uh, that parent than what parents have for their children, um, and uh, to to have the ministry um, disrupt us and 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 sort of sever it in this way, uh, and not allowing the contact is, is a horrible thing. Um, Amy, what what more support are you planning to offer, or can you do at this stage? Really, at this point, I'm working two jobs and I'm trying to be as supportive as, as I can. I've definitely made my opinion on the matter known, both in court when we went to appear and also on the Facebook page that's been created um, yeah. about this issue. You know, I, I put a lot of thought into this. As a mother, you don't just throw your children to the wolves. This is really a decision that was heart-wrenching and right. went on for months and months and months before our separation as to what would be in the best interest for our children. And I sincerely believe that he is the best choice. He has an incredible bond with all of them, and he's able to manage their behaviors and to to watch the school try to struggle with a lot of the behaviors and then have to call him into the few situations because they feel their hands are tied. The fact that they weren't even wanting to have her in a full-time curriculum setting, not that I could even call it curriculum, because really they're not trained in autism. Yeah, yeah. And he's really tried the best he can to manage. Right. And it's, it's been extraordinarily difficult. So if they walk into any specific incident, yeah. they really don't know the background that surrounded this or the years that have gone on to try to upgrade security and, okay. you know, take her, her growing into consideration. We'll end with this because I think this is, a, Amy's raised it and, and I, I see it with this family. I mean, there's another aspect to this too, and that's me as the, the taxpayer. This is a huge cost to taxpayers in British Columbia. Here, I am thankful that there's a father that's willing to take his responsibility seriously in the most ex difficult of circumstances. I mean, I, I raised four kids on my own. I cannot imagine what your day is like with having two um, special needs children to the degree of involving autism. I'm very full. You are a, you are a hero to most parents that, that you would do this. For the ministry to come in and cause you more challenge in your life is, this is the cruelest form of abuse that I can imagine. Your daughter's being abused, Amy's being abused, your sons are being abused. I mean, the fear that they must be living in, and, and most importantly, you are being abused. This has got to well, end. Most importantly, my daughter, but... Well, this is the whole yeah, family unit. You are a unit, mm -hmm. and this whole unit is being tortured, tormented, right. destroyed. Yeah. Enough. <laughs>